or a live. We're, this is our YouTube live stream. We're going to do the recording as well, which will show up on YouTube and on Vimeo. Uh, so why don't we get going? I've got with us uh, Eric Hafnagel. He is with the Lansing Community College out in Michigan. Um, so he's joining us today. And uh, let's get a quick sound check from you, Eric, just to make sure we're good on all sound. I hope my sound is working and I hope people can hear me. We're great. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. So we're going to switch back to my shot and then let's start the show recording if you want to count it down. Three, two. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Lectora Live, your inside track into Lectora. Today we've got a great show for you. Here we go. Now that's definitely a long intro. We're going to do a test at the end soon for that because it's a it's pretty long. Um, <laughs> we've got with us today Eric Huffnagel. He is with um, Lansing Community College in Michigan, and uh, he's an instructional designer, organizational developments person. Uh, but more than that, you're an e-learning developer. You're a video production guy. You've done a lot of different things. A lot of different things. My career has kind of tossed me all over the place. So it's <laughs> been one fun ride, to say the least. If I recall correctly, now you and I met at the Lectora User Conference, uh, yeah. and we did about a probably 10 minute interview over there uh, mm -hmm. live uh, at the show. Now, if I recall correctly, you actually have a degree in, in video. I do, yes. Yep. I went to uh, Ferris State University, which is in a nice small town of uh, Big Rapids, Michigan, mm -hmm. and I got my degree in television and digital media production. Uh, but I graduated, unfortunately, in uh, 2009, so right when the economy was having a fun time. Yeah, fun. So uh, <laughs> that was a little difficult trying to find a job. Did a little freelance work here and there, uh, but then I ended up making my way to a financial institution uh, to help pay the bills. So I started out as a teller, but then uh, made my way into the uh, training department and then really fell in love with training and at that time I was doing face-to-face -face trainings wasn't doing too much uh, anything uh, online or electronic related it was all face-to-face -face. Uh, but then I found the job here at the college and uh, now I'm behind the scenes doing online training course development and any other needs uh, as they come up and I am having a blast uh, doing it so it's kind of tied back uh, to my career in some way in video production as I do use elements of video here and there. So it's kind of come full circle as it were. It's, it's true. And I think as, as the industry is growing, maturing, and, and bandwidth is, is pretty big nowadays, mm -hmm. video is coming back in stronger than ever. Absolutely. Yeah, it really is. Yes. Uh, we're seeing more and more of that in, from vignettes to, to full-blown full movies right inside e-learning courses. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen courses that were just videos, mm -hmm. and and then there was quizzes or whatever somewhere thrown in between. Um, <clears throat> that's pretty good. Uh, now you use Lectora quite a bit. That's one of your main tools. Quite a bit. Yep, that is actually the main tool uh, okay. that I use here at the college. I mean, obviously, um, I have uh, Photoshop tied with that. I do have the Adobe Suite in mm -hmm. case I need to utilize. Um, uh, Premiere in any way, shape, yep. or form, um, and then, but having you know, having Lectora and having a simple tool like Camtasia um, and Snagit and all those little tools, that's absolutely fantastic and essential uh, to have. So, you know, you, you can't just stick with one thing. You have to have an entire library of tools at your disposal to create uh, to create a training course. Oh, that's true. And that, that's, what, that's one thing I like about Lectora Inspire for people who don't already have a lot of the tools. And we had them all already, but... It, it comes in so handy because, like you said, Camtasia is a pretty darn good little video tool. Oh, yeah. yeah you uh, know, and it, it's, it, it's funny as I was going to you know, school for video production and trying to find jobs, like it kind of makes you, uh, as a video person, it makes me a little upset that all these uh, video editing programs are so readily available for anybody because then it almost feels like <laughs> it's taking your job away, you know, because yep. anybody can do this editing now. Um, but I'm not going to lie, it's an absolutely fantastic tool. And yeah, if you're an entry level person, 
person, it's a very quick and easy way to learn uh, non-linear editing, and then mm -hmm. you can progress to the more advanced programs as you get uh, more experience with it. But I love it. It's great, especially if I need to do something really quick and simple. Uh, that's the tool that I like to use. You know what's funny? You know what we've started using recently, which we didn't until really only probably less than six months ago? We always used to use Camtasia for this. We'll mm -hmm. snag it. And it's funny. We record a lot of the meetings run with clients. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we go in through Skype. That way we can record the audio conversation going on because if we go into WebEx, the WebEx recorder is pretty pretty lame. It it doesn't give you very mm -hmm. good. And even go to meeting, they don't have great recorders. They're they're okay, um, but when we go in through Skype, now we have system audio available to us. Snagit sees it, and Snagit can capture everything. And we've done mm -hmm. up to three hour recording so far, wow. not a problem. Wow. And then yeah. at the end, you just say edit the beginning out or edit the end, or you can edit wherever you want. You just take out the regions you don't want and save as, you've got a video. It's and done. It's even nice easier amazing. than Camtasia, especially for that kind of, of, of meeting recording. And it's been great. It's been a really nice way to, to quickly record meetings that you can't do easily with the actual conference tools mm -hmm. at, yeah, at good absolutely. quality, at, at good quality. Whereas before, we used to do that in Camtasia with a yeah. lot more editing. It was just not that it was hard; it was just more tedious. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely, <coughs> when we have such a, you know, uh, deadlines and time crunches, it really helps to have those tools that you yeah. can get something done really uh, quickly but efficiently. Yep, we actually started using a new video tool. Um, just kind of getting into it, but it's been fun. DaVinci Resolve. I don't know if you've seen that one. Oh no, I have not it, actually. DaVinci Resolve was originally a color grading tool. Mm -hmm. Best tool in the industry for color grading. And okay. the price on it, <laughs> it's free. It's actually free. You can download it from either DaVinci Resolve or blackmagicdesign.com. Okay. And it's completely free. There is a pay wow. version, but that's really for cinema. Okay. If, and yeah. the, the feature set is 98% there for free. Wow. That's it, not a bad deal. It's <laughs> mind-boggling. And, and, the, mm -hmm. uh, and they do color grading, which is done with nodes. So you can have parallel or sequential nodes of color grading and you could take things in or out without ruining the rest of your color grading wow it's wow. pretty cool um and they about i don't know how many years ago they put in a full-fledged video editor hmm. and it's actually nice uh it does a, it does everything pretty easily it's pretty fast uh we use premiere too and i i think i like the look and feel of resolve better it reminds me of a little bit of sony vegas which was okay uh, a pretty big one we're using for uh, we used that for like 13 years 14 years and it's a good tool but now they've they were acquired and they've come out with some new stuff so we'll see what what happens there yeah. um but but video is a lot of fun and mm -hmm. uh, and you did television video so you're familiar with the whole switching thing and how everything kind of ties together uh, oh yeah, yeah. In, in your role do you see video playing a bigger role in the future um i d i do and i selfishly I really hope uh, it does. Um, we've slowly uh, rolled out elements of video in some of our training courses. Um, you know, it, no matter what you do in developing a training, you're you're not just like with movies. You're not going to please everybody, right? Um, so you're going to have the detractors who don't like the video; it's too distracting, or I can't hear it. Or then you're going to have the people that say, "I love video. Please do so much more." Um, I really do want to use more. I don't want it to replace it in any way. I think it's a good supplement. I don't right. think you can completely <clears throat> replace you know, training with, you know, 100% video because, um, especially in today's day and age, uh, especially with millennials, and I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to put myself in that millennial category. I just hit the, uh, the crossover line for that. <laughs> um, attention spans are so short. You yeah. know, if you don't have their attention in the first 10 to 15 seconds of your video, that's it. They've tuned out. So it can be a difficult process creating engaging video. So if you want to utilize it, you really have to make sure that it's engaging. Uh, so we're kind of slowly testing that out, seeing how it works. We recently had a, uh, a data security training that we did last year mm -hmm. that all employees had to do. And this was um, a training module purchased from another company. And everybody had to watch these 32 short videos, which ranged from one minute to five minutes max. 
and it was a chore. <laughs> and by the end of that, I wanted nothing to do with video uh, ever again. Well, IT so, videos can be really boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah topic's kind of dry. Um, a little dull. But, you know, just having a module with that many videos, and it really felt like a chore to get through all those. And some of the topics were really uh, engaging and was fine. So that's kind of an extreme example. We don't ever want to go that route again. So now we're slowly just doing little supplements here and there. Maybe something as simple as an introduction from an employee of a department where the training is kind of featured. So little things like that is going to help out in the long run. So in where you work, is it part of a group of community colleges or is it one college? Nope, just one. Just, just one, one community okay. college here in Lansing. Yep, we're the uh, the third largest in the state of Michigan. Okay. So um, yeah, yep, we're just our own community college. That's pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. So when you do training, you do it for internal stuff, or do you also do some training in, you know, to help the professors out, or um, in other words, in other words, to to add to their content? Well, my position actually falls in the human resources department, so okay. I'm a part of HR. Um, so the trainings that I deal with are mostly changes in policies and procedures, okay. um, any program changes, things like that. We do have a department that is dedicated for support for faculty, okay. and they're there to help you know, supplement their materials that they uh, need to have for courses and lectures and online classes. So I don't deal directly with faculty, so I'm kind of over the whole umbrella of the college, you know, if we have to update our, you know, Title IX training right. or data security for another example, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, so. so yeah. Okay, that sounds good. Um, you know, you were bringing up a little bit about the, the attention span of, of, of a lot of the, the younger kids and stuff like that. And that kind of brings me to gamification, which has been mm -hmm. so overused as a buzzword. Yes. Uh, because yeah. most e-learning games are some of the worst things you've ever seen. And, uh, yeah, and, yeah. and they misinterpret gamification as being a game. It's really mm -hmm. not. It's, it's elements of game design. Mm -hmm. um, it could be your interface. It could be maybe a story that you weave into it. But it's really not usually a game per se. It's just right. things that... Ha have you guys ventured forth into any of that at this point? Yeah, I see it as... I think of gamification, and just, that's such a weird word to me, <laughs> as... Um, Interactivity. Yeah. You know, I think it's more about the interactivity. I am an avid video gamer, so, mm -hmm. and that's even when I hear gamification, that really just sounds strange to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we do have, you know, we've introduced elements, uh, some activities. Uh, we have had some, uh, you know, Lectora has that wonderful partnership with the e learning brothers, mm -hmm. and they have those uh, uh, game templates that you can add into. Right courses. Now the college before I got here never had anything like that in any of their courses. So we had a lot of positive response from uh, fa uh, faculty and staff and student employees saying, hey, wow, it was actually kind of great to play a Jeopardy-like game okay. <laughs> instead of just reading, you know, blank slides. But yeah. <laughs> my favorite part is not utilizing the games, but the interactivity. So making each slide interactive in some way, whether it be replicating some sort of job that they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, replicating a website that they'll have to use, um, something as simple as scenarios, creating my own scenarios. I like the right. templates to kind of give me a baseline of where I need to start, yeah. but then I really like to go from there. So I really see it as interactivity. That's kind of the big thing. It's not just you know, yeah, playing a Jeopardy game or a Wheel of Fortune game. Right. Or, oh, let's deliver milk around the town, yeah. and, which makes <laughs> absolutely no sense for what, you know, for uh, like a pr avoiding sexual misconduct training, you know, things like that. It doesn't really tie in that well. So, uh, yeah, it's become a big thing, especially with uh, mobile devices. You know, a lot of places are really moving into the mobile uh, world. Uh, our courses are available to employees if, uh, to take if they have tablets. Ah, okay. Um, they can access it that way. Um, the We're not really a very mobile uh, community college at this point in time. Not too many people. Uh, I think we'd freak a lot of people out if we started really rolling out the, hey, you can take your trainings on your cell phone kind of a thing. I think that might... Um, People may not know how to process that. <laughs> um, so at some point, maybe, but that's kind of, you know, ties with that interactivity. You know, we like to touch on the phones, touch on the tablets. So yep. that really helps with that. Yeah, it's interesting because a lot of people, we talk to clients every summer. I mean, we want this to be like a game. 
Mm-hmm. And I said, what kind of game? And they go, something like Call of Duty. And I go, what's your budget? <laughs> <laughs> what's yeah, yeah, what's your company, budget? Sorry. And they go, well, we have like 5,000 bucks. I go, you want Call of Duty, huh? That was a mm-hmm. multi-million dollar game. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah. oh. Uh, it's really yeah. funny because a lot of people think that they're going to get an, a, a Nintendo, a PlayStation, or an Xbox kind of game. Mm-hmm. And then they realize, not for the kind of budgets that they've got. These yeah. games are really, really beautiful yes. drawn out pieces there's cinematography in, in motion mm-hmm. and um it's very different but i think that's the misconception people get when they hear gamification yes they absolutely. immediately think cool xbox mm-hmm. no uh, yeah. not quite Unless, yeah. no, there are some companies that actually have done xbox like games for training but they're few and far between right um, yeah now, the military does a lot of that mm-hmm. they do tons yeah, that, of, that of, of real world simulations Using engines like a Call of Duty or, or whatever else they're using that mm-hmm. that are very close to what they may encounter and, and yes they do and and believe me I knew one company it was a USDA branch and they were spending I think ten million dollars for a simulator, wow. it was a simulator game, and that's a lot of budget that's that, a, that is right, a major yeah. game but they were doing it because they had to. Um, really create scenarios where they had to have virtual reality be be in these games and be able to to learn how to move around in violent situations in fires and everything else Mm -hmm. and they tried to not simulate the fire realistically because those things sometimes get out of hand when they do that right Um, right. so it was interesting they actually built a whole simulator for that yeah that's well it's amazing it's amazing what what they can do and yeah like you said the the whole budget thing like there's no you really can't get that deep of a no. game <laughs> into your training and you know and just like with videos not everybody likes gaming not everybody no, is a gamer true. in some way so that's why i like to boil it back down to interactivity as opposed to just a game itself because yeah. i can tell you man if i had even if i had a game like super mario mm-hmm. in a training course here i can already see my you know email kind of blowing up <laughs> with you know oh what is this how do i do this you know it's almost too much of a struggle and this it right. is you know probably a generational thing as well um, yeah. so it goes back to you know who's your audience what's your target audience what's your outcome here and you got to figure out what's going to work uh best and sometimes you know just a simple interactive slide as opposed to like you said call of duty you know sometimes that's a little bit better yep now i do think the millennials get a bad rap because I know some 60, 70 year olds that are millennials, so it doesn't really right, matter. Right. Yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely. But I think they just get the bad rap because it's just, it's, it, there's a lot of them. And so as a result, that's probably what people go, oh, well, hey, yeah, that, that's kind of a general characteristic uh, of attention or whatever else. Right. Um, but of course, societies change too, and people forget to put that into perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was growing up, we didn't have rampant TV. We didn't even have color TV when I was growing up. Right. That came out later. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, so you didn't have all those distracting influences. Like the game, yeah. we didn't have games. We didn't have any kind of video games back then. I think, uh, what was that? I was probably late teens when I think Pong came out. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. And they weren't exactly the most stimulating games, though people got addicted to those too. Or if you went mm-hmm. to an arcade in those days, you had the beginnings, this is my early 20s, the beginnings of some of the kind of cool interactive games that there were right. flying games and and martial art games and all that. And mm-hmm. you know, the artwork was noth- nothing like it is now, but mm-hmm. still they were they were pretty interesting. Yeah. And, and you look and at where we've come, my gosh, it's so real right now. And then the other thing that's tying with gamification is the idea of badges yes uh and uh trophies and things like that and a lot of people are really trying to implement that into their workplace and uh we're kind of dabbling in it here and there with some you know uh, out of work extracurricular activities and we may assign some badges through our lms for things that they may complete and that's a whole nother that's another animal uh, yeah and some people care i could care less you can give me 40 badges doesn't mean a thing to me Uh, but some people uh, love them Mm-hmm. Some people, and I'm one of those, you know, with me, I play video games like crazy. Yeah. And when I get that little blip that pops up on the screen that I did something 
fun or different or cool or I reached some level and I got that I, yeah. hearing that pop and seeing that trophy go there I was like oh, that's, that's kind of cool it well actually on the game inside. it's more fun but in e-learning with the LMSs it's not as exciting it's like it's a, yeah, okay great I just yeah, passed the sexual harassment course exa <laughs> exactly it's like ah, uh, did, yeah some you know it's, it, it's great in theory but when translated to the workplace it just it's just probably not, not the going same. to work out it, well. it's no, not some, the there, same there are Absolutely. some people who like it but it's just I think it loses a lot of the uh, oh, I guess context because mm -hmm. when you are competing in a game and you're really trying to get up there and you get something it's like hey I made it cool um, but when you've taken a course I've taken 16 compliance courses oh yes. okay so and you uh, get yeah, your badge for like, ability to withstand torture you know things I, like that I, but like, <laughs> is that going to make me feel real good this <laughs> I'm not really sure because you know it's our job to make people at least at a you know minimum be engaged in right. the training course that you're uh, uh, giving because yeah. well, let's be honest here nobody loves training yeah you know, it's just that's the way it is yeah, and that's what it's always going to be well, especially especially like know, the, the compliance and the things that yes. they don't really want to do some training they like mm -hmm. but on the whole it's like oh i have to take that again yeah so um, our job is to kind of we know that that attitude is there so how can we get past that how can we at least get you engaged to you know take in the material and maybe if we're having a really good time uh, let you enjoy it in some way you know it's better than just reading you know blank well, slides I, I remember it so is, yeah it's, it's it's hard you can't really take a lot of those video game elements and bring it into a professional yeah. workplace <laughs> when nobody really cares for training in the first place right. i remember uh, we did something for southern california edison which is a probably the largest utility company in the U.S. And uh, we had a manager there who was in charge of OSHA and all the other things uh, relating to customer service. And he actually, we did about 20, th maybe 30 courses for him. He allowed humor. He wanted humor. He oh, wanted yeah. these to be funny, engaging. Mm -hmm. And we had a blast with those. I mean, we didn't have the technology to make them as nice as we could today, but it still mm -hmm. didn't look too badly. And uh, they were all very interactive, a lot of voiceover, a lot of sound effects. And those ran for almost, I think, about 12, 13 years, I oh mean, wow. literally. Yeah. And then eventually they, they moved on to something else. Mm -hmm. but, but at the time, those ran, and people didn't mind. Every two years, they had to take them, and they went, hey, these aren't too bad. They're kind of funny. Um, exactly. Yeah, that's a success. Uh, but that's so rare. Right that's there. the only person we've ever met in 21 years of doing strictly e-learning that actually wanted humor in a course wow yeah because that, that's another touchy yeah. area is the humor you know and sometimes uh, i've done some courses where we've tried to insert some elements of right. you know humor but of course you got to go through that approval process yeah. and mm -hmm. kind of people have to have the final say of whether or not yeah i don't think that's appropriate here right. oh, yeah that will actually work there so yep. um yeah if, God, if i had my way i'd have humor and everything oh, it would I mean, be funny I, and I, I, gotta I gotta laugh through the day yeah people are know, too sensitive so. right now everybody's worried about every Thing. But it's like, you know what, and th I think at the end of the day, everybody actually enjoys those courses. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. Yeah. And it makes it, it makes it different. When I was, when I was a kid, a kid, I was about 18, my, my very first computer class, we didn't have terminals back then. This is 1972. Mm -hmm. And um, we had paper terminals. So you would type everything in and the paper would just keep going at these huge boxes of, or reams of paper behind it. And I wrote and I wasn't a training specialist at all. I was actually going for an engineering degree in those days. Um, mm -hmm. and, but in the programming class, I wrote training that basically every question, if you got it wrong, it insulted you somehow. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most wow. popular course that we had there. Everybody wanted to take it because they wanted to see. I had about 100 and something random insults. Wow. And they weren't anything <laughs> really over the top, but they were, right. you know. Sort of like, yeah, really, you want to, really want to do this? Maybe you should consider another career. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you <laughs> so weren't meant funny. for yeah, this. I would so, enjoy that. Um, yeah. And everybody had a good time because they didn't know what they were going to get. And, and, and I've never been able to do that in real life. I thought it'd be really fun to do that in courses because that would get people's attention. Mm -hmm. And anything that gets their attention is something they remember. And, That's right. You know, emotion or and, and they weren't really nasty insults. They were just sort of goofy, funny. Um, but it's funny, you, in, in corporate and in government, you can't do anything because, no, no. oh, no, no, you're going to step on somebody's toes. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's good for them. Again, mm -hmm. develop some, right. some uh, thick skin. 
Yeah, so. you, could, you know, if you got a group of 150 people and you pleased 149 and there was that one person that didn't care for it, it's that one person that's going to make the difference, unfortunately. So that's just the way it is well, nowadays. We had, but, yeah. we had one course that we did. It was on ergonomics. And um, that was running for about 10 years. And we get mm -hmm. a call from them one day. And we had characters in it. One of them was Fred Fall Apart. He was the ocean nightmare. He, everything mm -hmm. was broken on him. And there was a scene where we had Dr. Strain, because we're talking about repetitive stress disorders. And Dr. Strain, we wanted him to look kind of like Freud. He, and we found a guy who was a professor at a community college in Santa Barbara, not far from us. Mm -hmm. And he looked like Freud. And he was a German teacher. So we go, this is <laughs> perfect. So he, uh, yeah. he faked his German accent in English. Uh, and he's talking to Fred Fallapart, who's in a test tube. And he's going, oh, Freddy, I don't know what to do with you. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And after 10 years, one person said that course was uh, racist against mm -hmm. Jews. And, and we're like, huh? And she said, a reminder of the Holocaust. And, and they took it down. One oh, person. Wow. And I went, that, that's, there was nothing in that course to even smack of that other than a comedic German accent because yeah. it was just really kind of done in jest. Mm -hmm. And Fred Fallapart, who's a mess, and he's in a test yeah. tube because the doctor's trying to figure out what's wrong with you, Freddy? Um, right. But no, so that shows you. That and, you know, SE, huge corporation, uh, 15,000 employees, took it down. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's interesting it what uh, one person on, on something really innocuous, I would have said, just give mm -hmm. us some, some help. <laughs> you know, that's like, yeah, right. I mean, right. really, yeah. come on. Um, mm -hmm. But that's that's kind of how it is right now. I hope it changes one of these days. But yeah, absolutely, because it, it's insane. We can't even make fun of each other anymore in a nice mm -hmm. way. And it just uh, I grew up watching Don Rickles, the comedian, uh -huh. and he was hilarious. He insulted everybody and anybody. Mm -hmm. And at the end, he would say, "If we can't laugh at each other, who can we laugh at?" Right. It increases, uh, you know, uh, completion time for trainings. You know, because you have yeah. to have all. You know, everything has to be checked and yes. double checked and triple checked. Mm -hmm. You know, so it really increases that completion time. So, you That's know, you true. have so many checks and balances uh, yeah. these days, and especially with me being in HR, you know, we really have to make sure that everything is right. a okay, passes approval before we uh, launch it out to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know a lot of people complain about HR departments, but if they don't do <laughs> that, then the legal department gets involved. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, we really want to, want to that avoid that. Line. Yeah, we want to yeah. take care of it first. Just don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. Have you been keeping up on the latest versions of Lectora? I have. You know, I actually, you know, people have always told me, you know, whenever new updates come out or things like that, don't get it right away. <laughs> Wait till it comes out and they iron out all the bugs and things like that. I'm the exact opposite. I said, hey, if I'm going to be the, I want to be the one to find those bugs yep. or, you know, help out in some way if I can. So anytime Lectora releases a patch or an update or a new version, I'm on it. I'm right on it. And I haven't had any issues in all, in the last, yeah, yeah, I've been, been very, two years. very few. I haven't had any issues with it. Yeah. It's, it's been great to get uh, those updates and start using them right away. And sure, they do have their fair share of bugs and things, but they're right. going to get fixed and get worked out. So yeah, I we really had, enjoy we had a, getting We had a weird it. bug when 16 came out, which had to do with just the way text was, was going on a screen. It was just a bug. It was a small one. We reported it, and within three days, they issued the bug fix. And I went, wow, that was, mm -hmm. it was great. I mean, they're very responsive. That's, that's one thing I, I really like about it. But we've been keeping up with the current versions, you know, like there were 16.1 and 16. They're, they've really just taken the product pretty far and and each mm. time it gets a little bit further which is just a, a lot of fun to work with I, I like what they're doing with it and some of the things I'm, I'm, i don't know if you're on the advisory board uh, i am not you no. should you should be on the advisory board because you've got no. you know, a diverse background that would be great for that I, i'll recommend you uh, all right that sounds so good. and Thank actually you. if you guys are watching uh Lectora guys okay right there eric eric Hufnagel, give him a call um Yes. Because you, you. you have the personality would be great for it because you've got opinions, you know what you're looking for, mm -hmm. uh, and you also have the video background, which helps because I know they want to add more and more to video. Mm -hmm. So I think that would actually be, be very good. But being in those calls, I've been on some other advisory boards in the past. They've got a great advisory board because not only do they listen, they really have an open forum to, to get, make the product better. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. that's one thing I love. Not only going to the meetings, but a year later seeing everything we talked about actually being implemented. That's a great thing. It I mean, is. Well, where else do you get that? Not, not too many places. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I've been on some other ones. I'll, I'll leave unnamed right now. But, <laughs> um, and they're pretty big vendors. And uh, you never saw anything. You saw things maybe. And, and mm -hmm. they were buggy. So this is, this is very 
rewarding. So when, when you get into these meetings, and there's probably about 30 people maybe on the advisory board, they're, mm -hmm. they're really good, good meetings, and, and they, they honestly pay attention, which is one thing I truly love. And they've got a really diverse group of, of talents. So mm -hmm. a lot of people bringing different things to, to the table, whether they're from colleges, universities, uh, business, finance, wherever. And so you're right. seeing a good cross-section of needs and um, and they really pay attention to that kind of stuff, which okay. for me is great. I, it it's nice to know that the efforts you're putting out to do this are are paid in full. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely, that's one thing I, I really do enjoy. I'll I'll bring you up to to Laura Silver and John Blackman, and hopefully they'll send you an invite because oh, you do, I think you have the kind of background that. that they would love. Um, but. Uh, no, I've been very happy with the new releases and, mm -hmm. and the stuff that they're doing. I know they fixed a ton of stuff in the, like, PowerPoint to uh, Lectora. That was, they used to have yeah. a separate product for that, and then they incorporated it, but it wasn't really looked at that much for a while. We found some bugs, fixed. Yeah. Within, I think, three months, they were totally fixed. And that's I, that I kind of really noticed the, the PowerPoint a PowerPoint import yeah. uh, updates. That's been really helpful, especially yeah. uh, for what I do. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's that's uh, how I receive my trainings is they send me the blank PowerPoint. And, ah, you know, okay. so that makes it really easy. That's kind of my first entry into making a new course. And then having um, the eLearning Brothers and mm -hmm. the stock assets all in place in Lector has saved me right. so much time. I love not having to go to Google anymore. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I still do, obviously, but um, it's so helpful to have the stock assets, uh, the videos, the photos, yeah. all of those right there in Lector and imported right there. That makes yeah. it great. And one thing that the eLearning Brothers have done, which I really like, they've tagged everything correctly. It's easy mm -hmm. to find mm -hmm. stuff. Because yeah. if you go to if you go to like iStock, eh, you don't always find stuff you're looking for. And mm -hmm. they've done a really good job. One of one of our IDs uses it all the time. And she just loves the fact that everything is there where she needs it. Mm -hmm. it, they've done a really good tagging, so that's important because not all of the services do that. So yeah, yeah, a, I try to utilize um, photos and media from our uh, organization mm -hmm. first and foremost. If I can use pictures of campus, right. employees, students, I'm going to do as much as I can because that helps. Because a lot of times when people see, you know, the stock photos of you know, they know corporate yeah. workplaces they know like uh you know it makes it kind of dull but like, when you see somebody hey you know i know that person or hey I, you know i walk in that building every single day yep. that helps with that connection uh so you know i really like to utilize what we have first but man when i need to go and get those other materials that we may not have pictures or videos for that really helps having that library well also being at a college you've got thousands of willing victims i mean uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> talents so true. Um, <laughs> so true. Uh, because yeah. they love i mean you just say hey i need i need to do a photo shoot of six students uh, i'll bet you you'll mm -hmm. get at least a hundred applying oh yeah um, yep, yep and it and that's great because that. you get real people and mm -hmm. that's what i love it in fact a lot of times when we're looking for local talents just to do a quick photo shoot and we need like let's say young people we go right to the colleges um mm -hmm. it's a good place to get young talent and they like being on camera a lot of them you right. know, it's not like the old days where you say uh, we, we're, we're going to do a photo shoot, and they're like, oh, no, no, not a photo mm -hmm. shoot. And they run. No, please don't. It's like yeah. Now you say photo shoot. Yeah, I'm there. How much? Uh -huh. Or if, do I have to get paid? <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> do I get paid? Yeah, do I even get that's paid? That's big question. Uh, they actually enjoy being in the photos and, and mm -hmm. being acting talent. We've done that. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not too far from Hollywood. We're probably about an hour away. So mm -hmm. we can go to Central Casting, which we do on many occasions, and we can get as many talents as we want for anything. Mm -hmm. But the students are cheaper, easier, and uh, I mean, especially if we're looking for the young ones, um, mm -hmm. it's just, it's easy to do that. It's, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. What, you know, you've been working with Lectora quite a bit. What, what features would you like to see in Lectora coming out in the future? Ooh, that is a fantastic question. Features that I would like to see. Yeah, here's your chance to get something in there. <laughs> wow, that's putting me on the spot a little bit. Um, maybe 
and it, maybe some things that I think about may already be there, and I'm just not, uh, I just don't know about it. That's the other thing. It's like, I don't ever believe that there's experts in any type of program. We're always learning. You learn something new every day when you use uh, these programs. So even though I may be using it for two years, I still don't consider myself an expert. I'm still learning. I'm an intermediate or a beginner, as it were. Um, maybe, I don't know how it would work, but like, you know, they have um, the connection with uh, snag it when you mm-hmm. need to edit photos and whatnot. If there was a way to make that connectivity to PowerPoint, because you know, some t- or excuse me, not PowerPoint to uh, uh, Photoshop, please. Because um, sometimes you need a little more powerful graphic editor, and uh, snag it can only do so much. So I'd really like to see maybe a connection to PowerPoint in some way. But now that I'm thinking about it, I think that's a setting that you can change, isn't it? Well, I think you can set up what you want as a you photo can set up editor, what you want but your editor to be. But I don't think it's a two way street. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's what I mean, because like it has that, once you do that save and snag it instantly, you know, those changes are reflected. Well, now that you said uh, that, right wouldn't here, it be great if we could bring in Photoshop layers? Mm-hmm. That, uh, oh, when you said that, idea. one, yeah, that'd be cool. You could bring in a graphic with layers and then just use what you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd make, yeah, that'd make it a little easier. So, okay, there we go. So I was on the right track, so it took yeah, me a second. That to would be pretty cool. To um, uh, get there. Oof. I know Adobe sort of does that, but it's, I'm not sure how well the connections work right now, but... But they do it with only their product. Um, mm-hmm. So right. that would actually be nice. And there is an API that you could use to do that. So mm-hmm. that, that would be a good feature request. Um, yeah. It's kind of hard to think because, like you said, I mean, I, from, I can remember back to when I first started two years ago to where Lectora is now, and they've just made so many great improvements. It's like it's kind of hard to they've added think right a lot. off the top it, of my head. Like, oh, boy, <laughs> what do I need now? They've already given so much. Or yeah, they've added so a much. lot. I mean, the only problem is they ever really have aren't theirs it's the browsers right oh uh, yes <laughs> yep the browsers yeah browsers. Browsers. we have a running mandate here at the college for when you take trainings you have to use google chrome i like to pretend there's no other internet okay. browser in existence so, so you uh, find yeah that's well, it's light still, is, yeah. is it because it's light and you don't have too much to worry about there yeah and it seems to um uh, work better with our LMS that oh, we have. Okay. Um, so I, I think a lot of it is LMS driven, not mm-hmm. really so much with uh, Lectora itself. But you know, after it leaves, you know, the course leaves Lectora and goes into our LMS, that's right. when we start having you know different issues with browsers. Well, so. Which which LMS are you using? Uh, we use Cornerstone. Oh, you use Cornerstone. That's okay, I know it well. Yeah, you know, we we're yeah. using that for one of our clients, and mm-hmm. uh, and actually Cornerstone is pretty good. It's pretty easy mm-hmm. to get content into it. Yes, the learning side has abs- been great so far. We really haven't had any uh, major issues with it, and we've been live with that for about the same time, uh, two years. So okay. they implemented that right when I got started. Um, and, yeah, it's been been very uh, been working very well. Um, but like I said, we just, uh, I know Internet Explorer just as well, and, of course, that's, you know, yeah. going by by anyhow but you know we always seem to have the best results with using chrome when launching our training courses that's yeah we don't use chrome in here we uh, we've used firefox a lot um but mm-hmm. all of our clients mostly corporate ie it's torture oh really yeah that's yeah. The amazing and thing. that's like, where yeah. we run into most problems because yeah. ie's except for edge the new browser which is a webkit browser mm-hmm. uh, i still have a theory that the new w- windows 10 edge browser is really chrome because we get Chrome right. error messages on it. <laughs> oh. And we're going, now wait a minute. How do you get a Chrome error message on IE, on, yeah. uh, on Edge? I don't get it. Yeah, so I suspect there may be some, some stuff that they've just licensed and, and they right. just branded it Edge. Because it sure works like, like Chrome, sort of. It's yeah. very similar. Um, mm-hmm. But we use Firefox for the most part. And, of course, customers, all IE. So far, it's still IE. And some of them are allowing Chrome. Mm-hmm. So, but no, really, I, I've, I've talked to John Blackman a lot, and he's the CTO at, at Trivantis, and, and, and he's just, because you say browsers and he cringes, because it's always something stupid they're doing. They render text incorrectly, or, yeah. or they add a security thing which destroys everything, and mm-hmm. oh, we, we just went through one where uh, we use uh, Microsoft Exchange, but a lot of us use the OWA app, the, the Outlook web app, Mm-hmm. because it's just lighter than having to go through the whole Outlook on a desktop. And they totally disabled it for Chrome and um, <coughs> and Firefox for about three months. It was frustrating, and now they finally fixed it. Wow. But it was a security thing. And who knows what they blocked, but they blocked it well. <laughs> <So> <laughs> they did a good job. It was a great job. 
couldn't yeah. get into email for three months. I had to go into IE to do my email, which wow. doesn't render text well. Yeah. So, so my yeah, emails have like a line. A yeah, I have a line of like a whole paragraph with one character on each line. Mm -hmm. I'm just going, oh, no. I um, remember to uh, when I first started and I, uh, to get around any text issues that I would have. I, I, I was I thought I was a genius and I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to convert all the text boxes to images. That's going to make it nice and easy. But of course, that creates its own you know right set of issues as well. But you know, but that's yeah, that's kind of where we're at. It's yeah, it's just amazing what browsers can do. They have a mind of their own. That's uh, for sure. They do, and and everybody interprets HTML just a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. enough to give you a headache. It's fine. Yeah. <coughs> well, Eric, it's been a real pleasure catching up, talking again. I uh, hope to have you back on the show in the near future. And, uh, and I will recommend you to the, to the Electoral Advisory Board. I really do think you'd be perfect for it. Well, thanks. I appreciate so, that. So thanks keep your, for keep your eyes open for that. I'll, I'll send them your email. Though I think they may have your email. Uh, but I'll send them your name and email and, and see if we can make that happen. All right. That'll sounds, be cool. Uh, sounds great. Um, and Eric, well, hey, you have a great Thanksgiving. That's coming up pretty soon. Yeah. And Here we uh, go. And, yep, and we'll talk to you real soon. Thanks for being on. Uh, thanks for having me, Rick. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Take care. And, and for all you people watching the show, please subscribe, uh, pass it on to friends, and let other people know that, uh, that we're doing this. This is on the uh, community forums for Lectora, so you'll always see the shows there. And you can just go to Vimeo, and you can watch it anytime, or watch the recordings on YouTube as well. Uh, so we'll see you next time. Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Bye-bye. See ya.